Welcome back. I'm still Dr. Daniel Watkins, and you're back for another installment of uh, Lessons in Professional Development by Dr. Watkins. And this episode is the Watkins Guide to Cover Letters, the perfect companion to the Watkins Guide to Resumes. In this video, I'm going to paint a beautiful picture of the perfect cover letter with all its nuances, showing you every brush stroke and every bit of shading that I do to create a masterpiece of job application material. So come along and join us in this wonderful journey. Probably overplaying that bit, aren't I? I'll leave it in. Okay, so welcome back. Video two, video three, I can't remember which, of my professional development series. This one is gonna be on cover letters, the kind of companion piece to resumes when you're applying for jobs. In this video, we're gonna look at sort of two different things. Again, we're gonna talk first about what a cover letter is and what its purpose is. And then we're going to move on to sort of best practices for cover letters, what we should do and what you should be thinking about as you write a good cover letter. Okay, so let's just start with a basic definition of what a cover letter is. All right, welcome to the Watkins Guide to Cover Letters. This is the companion video to the Watkins Guide to Resumes. So if in this last module of the class, you're going kind of down the route of applying for a job, then you should watch this video and the resume video because they go together. All right, let's start with the basic question. What is a cover letter? Let me give you a basic definition. All right, I'm pulling this definition from a website from the Columbia University Center for Career Education. This is what they say about cover letters. A cover letter is a one-page letter that you submit when applying to a job that will convey to the employer why you're a great candidate for the role. All right, that's simple enough. A few things to kind of notice here. One, a cover letter is a one-page letter. I'm going to emphasize this later. Second, you submit a cover letter when you're applying to a job. So most jobs will ask you for basically two things, a resume and a cover letter. And they kind of work together to do the work of, of conveying to the employer why you're a good fit. So a thing that you should think of with cover letters is that cover letters are, despite what you might think, argumentative essays. They're exactly like the essays you write for history classes. You are putting together an argument. And the argument is specifically, hey, employer, I would be good to hire. So a cover letter is a one-page argumentative essay on the topic of why you're awesome. And like a resume, the main goal of the cover letter is just to explain why you are a good fit for the job and request an interview. In fact, the cover letter is the place where you specifically request an interview of the employer. So the point here is that the resume and cover letter will move you on to the next stage. And then in the next stage in an interview, you have to wow them with your charismatic personality and uh, wonderful communication skills. In a cover letter, you are expounding upon what you have in your resume. So you're sort of bringing it to life. All right, section two, best practices for cover letter writing. What are the basic conventions that we need to follow when we're creating one of these things? Okay, now on to my five tips or my five rules for writing cover letters. Rule number one, tailor your cover letter to the specific job for which you are applying. Does this rule sound familiar? If you watched the resume video, then it should. Because like a resume, a cover letter has to be tailored to a specific individual job. You cannot just write a cover letter that is a stock cover letter and send it to 100 different uh, applications. It's not going to work. The point of a cover letter is to tell a specific employer that you are exactly the person that that specific employer wants. Okay, rule number two. Show, don't tell. What do I mean here? Well, don't write... Um, 
using vague or abstract language. You want to give as many concrete examples of the things that you're trying to say about yourself as possible. That means that you don't want your cover letter just to be a series of sentences like, I am smart, I am hardworking, I am very thoughtful, I am a very good uh, employee. When you say things like this, follow up those sentences with examples that show that that's legit. I am smart. Oh yeah? Prove it. I have this high GPA, 3.9 GPA, and I got, I don't know, um, really great SAT scores or something. I don't know. Whatever metric you would use to prove that. You have to show evidence of the things that you're saying about yourself. If you just use adjectives in a cover letter, it's going to totally flop. Okay, rule three. Be organized, use paragraphs with topic sentences and or bullet points. So again, the point of a cover letter is to get you an interview. So you need to convince the employer of the things that you're trying to convince them of um, as, as well as possible. Organization is your friend in this. You need to make it super duper clear the points that you're trying to make to that employer, to the person who reads the cover letter. The best way to do this, I think, is to have paragraphs and have those paragraphs uh, include topic sentences, aka the first sentence of the paragraph that gets at the big point that you're pushing through. Then the rest of the paragraph is just evidence that kind of supports that point. You could also do this with bullet points. I'm totally fine with that. In fact, I kind of like the visual of bullet points. But whatever you choose, make sure that the main points that you're trying to drive home, your reasons to your argument, if you will, are super clear. All right, rule four, be concise, one page only. Okay, really similar one to resumes too. A resume is one page only and a cover letter is one page only. Don't go long, they'll throw it out. Finally, rule number five, make it a compelling argument. In other words, don't just rehash your resume. So again, like I said, a cover letter is an argumentative essay. You are trying to prove to the employer something about yourself. So structure your cover letter like an argumentative essay. Make that argument really clear and compelling with lots of evidence, lots of good examples, lots of clear writing. All those essays you're writing for your history class, they are preparing you for this moment right here. Get fired up. All right, so let me give you an example of some of the things that I just talked about. We're back to our friend Baller Student who is applying, if you remember, to a position uh, at the Library of Congress as a researcher. So let's see if Baller's resume is following the rules that we just talked about. So let's see if Baller's cover letter follows the rules that we just talked about. Okay, first things first, the cover letter does do the work of being tailored to a specific job. How do we know? Well, first things first, the address of the employer is up there. Again, don't just have one stock cover letter because you're going to send it to the wrong person or you're going to put some other employer's address on a cover letter to a different employer. That's bad form. Don't do that. Second, the very first paragraph sort of shows you exactly the, the attention being paid to the specific position. It's listed there, assistant legal researcher position available with the Library of Congress. But then the student really tailors the whole letter to kind of crafting the student's image in the form of, of what that position would be. Okay, second... The student shows and doesn't just tell. Let's look at an example of this. In the second paragraph, there is a kind of uh, topic sentence here. The student is saying, I've developed strong analytical, organizational, and communication skills during my experiences as an intern with the U.S. Attorney's Office and a student at Baylor University. Okay, you could just write that and then move on. But instead, the student goes into examples to show that. My time as an intern, I transcribed testimonies, attended court hearings, received individual mentoring from some of the nation's top attorneys. As a political science and history student, I've spent considerable time analyzing complex texts, gathering and organizing political documents, and communicating ideas in both written and oral forms. There you go. Examples of exactly the thing that the student was saying. This is the student showing and not just telling. And this is also an example of the third rule, to be organized and use topic sentences. Those paragraphs start with sentences that are presenting the kind of reason behind the student's argument. And then the rest of the paragraph shows examples of why that reason is true, right? That substantiate those reasons. Be as specific as possible and use it to kind of breathe life into some of the things that are on your resume, but you don't get a chance to really talk about in any depth. For example, this student talks about a senior thesis on the topic of the development of the juvenile justice system in the early 20th century, uh, in early 20th century New York. That's something that shows up on the student's resume, but it doesn't have much depth to it until the cover letter. 
Okay, rule number four, is it one page? Yep, it is. Good job, baller. And then finally, is it a compelling argument? Well, it's certainly structured that way. First and foremost, the student sort of has a thesis statement in the first paragraph. Look here, right? The student says that they're applying for this assistant legal researcher position at the Library of Congress, says who the student is, and then I'm seeking employment with your institution because of my passion for legal research and historic preservation. So that is a really clear thesis statement that then organizes the whole rest of the essay because paragraph two is about how the student is a, is, uh, has a passion for legal research and experience in legal research. And then you see all these examples. And then paragraph three is how the student uh, is, has a passion for and has experience in historic preservation. Boom. And then at the very end, the student says, basically, because they have that ability to positively contribute to the work of the Library of Congress, um, or because they have that experience, they can positively contribute to the work of the Library of Congress and asks for an interview. Mwah. Chef's kiss on that cover letter. It's great. It does all the things that I wanted to do. Okay, I want to finish the video now with a few final thoughts and suggestions um, for going about writing cover letters. First, you should know that cover letter writing is going to take a considerable amount of time. If you're applying to a bunch of different jobs, you'll find that the resumes that you write will only need to be tweaked kind of a little bit for each job. Um, but cover letters really need to be pretty fresh for every single job that you apply for. That's because cover letters are really intended to be tailored to every specific job that you're that you're applying for. Um, they should be really specific to exactly the position that you're trying to get. So make sure to allocate a lot of time to sort of do and work on your cover letter when you go about uh, looking for jobs. Okay, second, your grammar needs to be on point in cover letters. Grammatical errors and typos will just absolutely kill your chances of getting jobs. It just shows employers that you're not really paying attention or you're not really working hard at this or um, you don't have a lot of, like you're not very detail oriented. It's a killer in cover letters. So make sure that your cover letters are really, really clean. Okay, finally, if you want more suggestions on how to write a cover letter, I really highly recommend you work with the people at the Career Center. They're super duper good at um, helping you sharpen career, uh, cover letters, helping you think about how to tailor them to specific jobs. They have all sorts of resources and programs to help you do this. Uh, they're really, really great. So please see some people at the Career Center. Make an appointment, go and talk to people, um, and it will really, really help. Okay, that's it for this video. Good job. See you in class.